Just be a normal field trip with a friend? No way! Cruising on down Main Street, you're relaxed and feeling good. Yeah. Next thing that you know, you see it. You're pushing the neighborhood, surfing on the sound wave, swinging through the stars. Yeah. Take a left at Joe and Justin. Take your second right past Mars on the Magic School Bus. Navigate an Austro. Climb on the Magic School Bus. Spank a plane, turn two. Take that. And I'm Magic School Bus. Drop the river of love. I'm Magic School Bus. Such a fine thing to do. So strap your bones right to the seat. Come on in and don't be shy. Just to make your day complete. You might get baked into a pie on the magic school bus. Step inside, it's a wild ride. Come on, ride right on the magic school bus. It looks like he got into one of them. Oh, bad. Oh, bad. Oh, bad, bad, bad. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Well, class, you know what this means. It's, it's time, time for a field trip. To the bus. Wow, where are we, Miss Frizzle? We are in Epi's left leg, viewing the inside of his sciatic nerve. What are those weird tunnel rock-looking things? Those aren't tunnels. They're ion channels, right, Miss Frizzle? That's right, Dorothy Ann. Does anyone know what those ion channels are for? Aren't they for sending electric signals down nerves? Yes, that's correct. But this nerve is damaged, and so we should view a healthy frog sciatic nerve to see how it functions. So class, here we have a healthy frog sciatic nerve. As you can see, when the nerve is stimulated, a fast-paced action potential travels down the nerve. The action potential occurs by the depolarization of the membrane potential. The depolarization travels by the opening of sodium channels and the influx of sodium ions. The repolarization of the nerve is due to a combined effort of activated potassium channels and the inactivation of sodium channels by a ball and chain mechanism. The sciatic nerve is made of many nerve fibers, and the compound action potentials that are sent are based off a of threshold of recruitment. As more nerve fibers are actively sending action potentials, the compound action potential increases. This causes a recruitment of different types of nerve fibers, which recruits from alpha, beta, gamma, and delta respectively. They recruit in order of their conductivity based on their diameter size and myelination. In most frogs, conduction velocity is about 30 to 40 meters per second. The absolute refractory period for most frogs is about one millisecond. Now let's try and see what happens with each of these drugs that were lying by epinephrine. The drug verapamil acts as a calcium channel antagonist by binding to calcium channels in the nerve membrane and prevents the influx of calcium into the cell. The majority of calcium channels can be found in the presynaptic portion of the nerve. Because the portion of the nerve that we are examining did not contain the presynaptic terminal, there are no calcium channels for it to affect. Thus, the threshold, conduction velocity, and refractory period of the nerve was unaffected and displayed the same trends that could be found in a normal frog. According to my observations, verapamil is not the agent that caused epinephrine to get sick. Calcium affects the frog nerve by binding to sodium channels. The channels consist of amino acids with negatively charged ions at the top and positively charged ions at the bottom. 
When calcium comes in, it bonds to the negatively charged ions at the top, which makes it more difficult for the channel to open. Because the channels can't open, there is a decrease in flow of sodium ions, which increases the time it takes for the nerve membrane to depolarize. Thus, calcium increased threshold by inhibiting sodium ions to enter its channels. Since less sodium channels were activated, the maximum cap of the nerve and conduction velocity decreased. However, the refractory period of the nerve did not change. Since calcium only inactivated sodium channels, epi could not have been affected by this drug. Amiodarone blocks inactivated sodium channels from deactivating. However, recovery from the block occurs after a few seconds, causing activation of sodium channels to take a longer period of time. It also delays activation of potassium channels, causing slower repolarization that prolongs the action potential duration. A greater stimulus potential was needed to fire a larger number of sodium channels that were not blocked by amiodarone or recovered from the inhibition of amiodarone to reach the threshold potential. Conduction velocity of the nerve decreases as less sodium channels are activated so that a greater threshold is needed to stimulate the nerve. The refractory period of the nerve was reached at a longer time interval. During the repolarization of the nerve, sodium channels became inactivated, which allowed amiodarone to bind to these channels and block them from contributing to depolarization when a second stimulus is applied to the nerve. Thank <laughs> you. 